Hey guys, it's Ellen here and it's Floral Friday and today we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts and how to make an abstract watercolor. I show you how the typical people went to do it thinking how abstract watercolors work for a beginner and how I would do it. And the key is really how I, for me creating this is the brushes and I'll explain that in a minute. So you can take this and turn something like that, these kind of elements, the sunflowers, and to turn something vibrant and exciting and different. So it's the brushes and the technique. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Also, uh, if you haven't hit the bell notification button, to do, please do so to know my so you know when my tutorials are up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And also check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials on YouTube, and uh, live stream once a month. Usually it'll be third month or third Thursday of the month. Uh, you can check it out up here. Boop. It's a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. So without further ado, let's get painting some abstract flowers. So the first thing people do that makes them that's pretty much wrong is that they buy cheap paper. And this is an arch 100% cotton cold pressed paper. It lends itself to making more wet on wet kind of really cool abstract flowers. Cheap paper is going to have like cauliflower blooms. It's not going to look as nice and it's just not going to create that look you look. Also the second thing is the brush. People use this typical brush. This is like a round Prince and Neptune 10 series but typical round brush. Um, it's kind of not how I create abstracts and they'll just paint the blooms as we see here with the yellow cadmium yellow deep. Um, just a typical sunflower here. We make the typical sunflower shape petals, but they'll kind of all paint them facing forward. You really kind of just don't want to face forward your blooms. It just looks like kind of juvenile and um, not quite as sophisticated. So people would just take the color straight from the tube, maybe mix in a little color with it, but paint these facing forward blooms, you know, and then like that's kind of cool. And then they'll add in some like bright orange, you know, kind of loose looking color on the side here, which I'm doing here, typical. Just to add the color, you know, so you look like it has <coughs> abstract. And when you get the green here, I mix uh, cadmium yellow deep and peacock blue. And I'm just going to put the stems coming down and just doing some loose leaves and thinking this is the way to go for abstract. You know, it looks loose, but it doesn't have the intensity, you know, added some the center also they add the center into early and it kind of bleeds out doesn't have quite the same quality as so it looks loose but it's you know it doesn't have the intensity you might add some darker color to it some deeper greens thinking that will help right I'll add some deeper greens and get some more intense with that color on the blooms it just kind of looks goofy and I don't know doesn't really have any kind of emphasis on being different and abstract and then you might go in and add some deeper yellows to help the sunflowers a little bit, but they're still kind of looking sad. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but um, you know, it's not it's not the intense that we're looking for when you think of abstract. You can go then you can go think about adding some more stems, and that might help a little bit, but it's still not going to be the same thing. And then you're thinking maybe I should add some you know deeper red, and that will help. So I'll add some deeper reds in the corners that will just bring out some more intensity and some abstract kind of look to it. But it really just kind of looks like paint just kind of plopped down, right? There's nothing special about it. And then you'll think, well, maybe I'll add some blue for the background. I'll grab some ultramarine, you know, water it down and I'll stick that in the background. That will help, right? No, that's not really going to help it much either. So while the ultramarine blue looks nice with the colors, it's just really not going to give you this abstract quality that you're looking for. You're looking for some intensity, some uniqueness, you know, some vibrancy, some movement. It's just not going to give you all those things. It just kind of looks like a nice little meh, like floral design that was attempting to be abstract. Okay, so we have the same paper. This is our 100% cotton cold press paper that I taped down um, using a scotch tape on just a thick piece of cardboard to help me keep it in place. And this time, instead of using this round brush that we're gonna be using, I like to use flat wash brushes. I have a three inch brush and a one inch flat wash brush. 
I love them because they actually um, create more intense and movement type blooms and it's kind of a different way to paint so therefore you're forced to create something you know more intense with that um, and the way you move the brush is kind of how you know you create that movement of the blooms so I'll take the one inch brush um, I'll add a little brown to my yellow hair and I'll probably put another color in as well you want a good amount of paint you don't want to have a minimal amount of paint because you really need to it's going to soak it up and you're going to need to use a lot a lot of paint with this uh, big old brush so I have a couple tutorials using this brush um, I think I had one for a week ago so you're holding the brush and you're moving it you're twisting it you like whoosh, twist so you go put it down and you're gonna twist your your wrist basically when you put the paint down twist twist pushing it you're pushing it out and you're twisting your arm and wrist you see you'll see me kind of twist the brush and kind of push it out you want that movement you want that fast movement of just throwing the paint out but twisting the brush at the same time you see I'm just kind of moving fast and I always have the blooms facing kind of like sideways you don't see a full frontal of the bloom of a sunflower it looks a little more natural and it has more movement that way the full fronting look of the petals just kind of seems goofy and not natural you want it to look more natural so I'll go in and grab some uh, orange paint and I'll do the same thing like we showed before but with this brush you're gonna have to have this different kind of movement and the bloom will be created easily in a different shape because of the brush you just kind of doing this back and forth and I grab some paint on the corner see the corner of this brush because it's so big and wide I grab some brown and I can put that on the corner of the brush while it's still wet with the other color and kind of put that in there too and see I'm wiping it on paper towel to get rid of excess if I don't like it but you can use that big brush and you can put different paint colors on the corners and kind of twist it and create something with that as well now I've got the greens because I want to put some green leaves in there and just kind of pushing it down and twisting that brush see how we twist it you twist it it's flat down twist flat down twist and that whole movement is going to create a whole different kind of look a different petal uh, a different bloom then you can you can use it on its side to create like a nice simple um, stem but this is kind of a thicker brush so I would create the stem with the skinnier smaller brush but you see I'm just adding in more color with the edge of the brush I can go back in even while it's still wet grabbing more color you know it's a really big brush you can grab more color and put it on the edge like I see it can showing you here on the edge and just adding it into that wet damp um, leaf that you see and I'll just keep doing things like that I'll keep adding and subtracting now here's the skinny three three eighths inch brush you know you can use this to create um, nice skinny stems I'm adding uh, burnt umber with some neutral tint make a really deep dark brown you know I'll play around with that and but you know in the big but right now I want to add some more background color so I'm gonna grab that yellow I'm gonna really water it down I'm gonna kind of put it all on the edge in the bottom here right and around a little bit because it's feel like it's too white in the bottom I'm gonna do that and after I do that just wash in some nice pretty colors it can be any of the color you want but I'm adding more yellow I'm gonna let that fully dry okay because if I don't let that fully dry if I go to put a stem across it it's just gonna bleed into a blob and you don't want to do that you could kind of wait till it's completely um, dry I mean uh, just a little bit damp but I wouldn't do that so I'm adding in some more reds up here on the top um, I'm sorry it's kind of missing off the page but you get the idea like from the orange blooms it's just adding more deeper color just kind of like washing in a little spray of red with magenta and some orange just throwing that in there and um, somehow when I'm editing this thing it just got lost so again I'm using that three inch brush to uh, make the stems but right now I can do some other you know I can do some stems on the other side around it well, before the part in the bottom is dry so we're just going to put some like intense stems like around the sunflower and the orange flowers that we did just kind of giving it some life you know I just love it so I'm going to go back in when it's dry and do the other stems so now that I've let that dry a little bit here I can go and take my brown and my black color and I can start to make some stems play around with that on the edge hold it this way 
some skinny stems. And you do want this intense color. And I'm still wet up here and let this part dry. And I'll explain that in a minute. I'm just putting some of this dark color up here and going off the page. And you want that intense color and just kind of pushing it around in different places. Just like that. But you can get a little water down and you can put some lighter ones down this way. And then you can add some greens. See, I'm mixing up the green here. Put some greens. See, I'm just twisting. And you've got this really cool greenery coming down here. Just want to make your arm go like this. Move, 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 move. Fast. See? Fast. And then we'll go in and we're going to add some more orange and yellow. See, I'm grabbing some right from the tube, a little bit of orange in this. Again, adding more intense color for the sunflowers. Let's see how I'm moving this like this. You want to get intentionally moving your arm to create that movement that really kind of pull abstract movement. And we got this orange here. Put that back in here. Really deep, intense color. A little more red orange up here with some brown. Again, you go back over that color and add some more intensity. And you've got this nice, cool abstract. Now, I'm going to add that center. Oh, see? Add the brown, the black, the sunflower. Some of it will bleed, some of it will not. Now, this is the fun, tricky part. I've shown this kind of a couple of times in some of my tutorials. I'm going to add another stem in here. We'll kind of kind of mush the paint. So we have this big brush again. Get water on it. We're going to lift up the page here. And we're going to take intentionally kind of push the paint. And you can just tap the excess off on your paper towel. See, kind of push the paint. So it's a nice hard edge up here, which is nice. But then now we're going to push the paint. You grab water. You kind of mush it. See? Water, mush it. And push the paint. Same thing again here. Water. Really kind of dig it in. It's already dry. And then push it. Dig and push. And you get that atmospheric, kind of really cool look to it. It's like you're removing, you're painting and removing. See? And that creates that really kind of atmospheric, abstract, loose style painting. So, <laughs> see? You can remove it. You could go back in again and paint over it once it's dry, but this is the way I kind of create that. Now I've raced the leaf. I want to go back in and add some of that green again. I can do that. But you see the difference between the simple, the simple abstract and the more intense abstract. You're adding intense color, you're moving the brush, and then you're wiping away. And if you wiped away too much of your flower, you can always go back in and add some color. So once it's dry, you can go bent, well, it's still kind of wet and you've like erased some of the flower. You can go in and back with your orange, whatever colors you have. It's still very damp, so it's going to bleed. 
and you can add some of that color. Another trick also, um, still bleeding and you don't like it, you can kind of remove it like a mop. See this? And you can add, again, more interest. You clean up your brush, you grab your paper towel, you kind of lift the paint and grab it and put it on the brush and put it on the paper towel. So it's kind of removing the paint. That's another cool way to make some more abstract blooms. So I'm just like lifting the paint. And when this is all kind of dry, you can go back in and grab a small brush. I have a number four, Princeton number four. I've got the same color as this brown, this black. So this is a neutral tint with burnt umber. And you can go in and add some nice thin lines if you want. It doesn't have to be anything like this. Just adding more interest, more movement. And it doesn't even have to be that color. I could have gone back in and added some yellow, and some orange to the sunflower. You see that? Again, it's just going to make it more interesting. And different than the original ones we put down, right? Because they're just sitting there kind of facing forward. They have no movement. I think the abstract, you need to have movement. Gives it life. So I'm using this skinny brush and going back in and just kind of filling in a little bit. Don't want to fuss with it too much. You can overdo it. And then that orange flower here. You can go back in and add some nice sprays. A little on the brown side. It just makes it a little more different and interesting. All right? To get that abstract look. So you see the difference? When you're painting abstract, it's not just the paper and that's just the colors. It's the movement. Instead of using a brush that's round like this, you still could do it, but I think it lends itself so easily to using flat wash brushes to make a really cool abstract because you're going to have to turn and twist the brush and you're going to get that movement. And then you can go in and use a skinny brush for the details at the end, but you're really going to create something really fun and interesting and dynamic when you're using a different type of brush than this and the intensity of the color and how you're washing it away. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little quick tutorial on how to do a really fast, easy, fun, abstract um, floral without having to fuss too much. So um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you haven't hit the bell notification, please do so. And also check out my Patreon. Thanks guys so much. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon.